what's up and welcome, I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to the Young Gun series here with Plymouth Argyle and today we will be completing season number one with Plymouth with five games remaining, it's all still to play for. We're only uh, eight points clear of Knox and ten points clear of Accrington. Yeah, that's quite a bit, but our form recently has not really been the best. We've let a lot of games get past us, slip through our fingers, we've missed out on a lot of points. But we do have two crucial games today, Knotts and Accrington. We play both of them, and the big one is going to be against Accrington. If we can beat them, we should be okay. If we can beat Accrington, that should be enough to see us through in the top three and an automatic promotion spot to League One, where, if we are able to earn promotion, there will be a few rule changes for next season as far as who we can bring in and how we can bring players into this team. So I'm looking forward to kind of shaking things up in that regard, but first... We have to get the job done. We have to earn promotion. So to start off with today, we're going to be away to take on 11th place Hartlepool. We're only playing two teams outside of the top seven in our final five games. This is one of them. We have to pick up points in this game, or at least a point on the road. I know it's not going to be easy, but every point counts right now. We have to get a result from this one. All right, here we go. Kick off against Hartlepool. This is kind of the tune-up game for the two big matches we have coming up against Knotts and Accrington. Let's have a good performance here. We don't want to run my players into the ground, though. We do need them fit for these next two matches, but we need to have a good performance. We have to pick up points. Boy, Jimmy Spencer. A little high pressure from Jimmy there. Gallagher to Spencer. Lay it off here for Green! What a fired shot from Green! Yes. Oscar Martin, beautiful tackle, and Paylard has it. It's up for Martin. Martin, woo, a little bit of a sliding pass inside. It's going to be Gallagher. Oh, no, it's on his left foot. There's just no hope for that. Not with a one-star weak foot. He can't do it. Dang it, man. I hate his stupid left nub. Why can't you grow a right or left foot, Gallagher? Paylard plays it through for Spencer. Spencer, not really where I wanted it. Oscar Martin has the pass, though, and again, it's Gallagher on his left foot. Why is he always on his left foot? Jesus, they keep trying these long passes. Oh, nice play, Gallagher. Get that play through. Oh, what a slide tackle from behind. We had Oscar Martin as well. Through on goal, and that is halftime. We've absolutely dominated this game. I think the entirety of that first half was played in Hartlepool's half. They could not get the ball past midfield. We 100% dominated and have nothing to show for it. Jimmy Spencer looking for Liam Green. He has him. Green now looking for some space. Finds that ball to Gallagher. Gallagher gets that pass off to Green. Green lays it for Jimmy Spencer. It's blocked, but Jimmy Spencer finishes it. And there is the goal we were looking for. Exquisite passing play from this Plymouth team. And Jimmy Spencer, who is nearing the top of the league in goal score this year, puts another one away. And we finally have the lead against Hartlepool. A much-deserved lead in this one as well man that was a struggle to score that goal but it's so satisfying when you finally get it what a pass what a ball over the top oh my goodness they've not made a play like that all game but they've made plenty of those no bovides oh that was a disaster waiting to happen oh god Saxella. Oh, there's just too much pressure i couldn't get the ball away oh no oh no hartlepool on the counter attack we're on it though bovides Oh, no, don't give it back! Oh! Oh! How'd he miss? Oh, God. There are so many numbers coming forward for Hartlepool. Now, the shot! Are you serious, man? They just... I can't believe they scored that in the 90th minute. I can't remember the last time I won a game with this Plymouth team. That's why we can't get knocked into the playoff spots. We just can't win games right now. That's so heartbreaking. We dominated this game, but ever since we scored the goal, it's just Hartlepool have had the possession. They've just gone completely high pressure, throwing numbers forward, and they just overwhelmed us there. Just couldn't just couldn't close that guy down in time, and it's a fantastic finish, and it's 1-1. That's the final whistle. Another draw snatched from the jaws of victory. God, we just got to put games away. Every time we take a lead, the other team just turns on the pressure and we get overwhelmed and we just can't stop it. 
we got to learn how to put these teams away or next year is going to be a real struggle. All right, so our scout in Ireland has concluded his search. So we're actually going to move him to a new country because, honestly, there's only so many players with the last name of Gallagher that we can have in one team. I mean, how many brothers can there really be in one team? So we're going to move him on to Scotland for the rest of the season. It's going to be like three months. We'll see what he can find there. After that, he may be moving a little bit further out. All right, here we go. The two big ones, back-to-back. -back. Knott's County first, then Accrington. Thankfully, both of these games are going to be at home. But we are not at full strength for this one. Fitness is a little bit of a problem. We have to slightly rotate the team. Jervis is in there for Gallagher. Brown is on the left instead of her VP. And Threlkeld is in the midfield instead of Sonogo. But Jimmy Spencer's in the lineup. And in Jimmy, we trust. Come on, Jimmy. Score us some goals today, buddy. All right, here we go. Kickoff against Knotts. They come in nine points back now of us in second place. And Accrington stayed ten points back. So we're still okay. Four games left to play here. We have a nice lead. Just got to keep picking up these points. Come on, Throckold. Nice header win. Again, we're getting this job done. Yes. Yes, Jervis. Nice run. Jake Jervis puts it home. Yo. I know we need to play these Youth Academy players, but look what Jake Jervis does when he plays. He's an absolute monster. Him and Jimmy Spencer up top, they're like the dream striker partnership. But at the end of the season, we really need to be replacing both of them. I mean, it, we've had a full season here. We need to have a full Youth Academy team. I don't want to see them go. I love both of these players so much. And just like that, it's one nothing early against Knotts. That's a dream start right there. No, I didn't want that. Actually, that'll work. We'll go for Jimmy. I mean, we'll go for Jervis. I was trying to get that ball to uh, Evans. What a pass from... Jake Jervis and Brown, he's just not good. Oh, big, big play from Martin. Ah, boy, thank you. Oh, yes, Jake Jervis again. Oh, he missed. That was the tougher of the two finishes, and he missed. How? Jervis, put it away. Oh, my goodness. What a ball in for O'Connor. Oh, that's a good pullback. Oh, Rafferty. What a save, my dude! He does not make many saves. That was a very nice one. Yes, Jervis. Go on that run, Jervis. Go ahead. Beautiful first touch as well. Run away from the defense. Jake Jervis. What the hell? That was supposed to be on the ground. He fired that thing in like the seventh row. Damn, Jervis. No. Oh, ref. I can't even talk right now. I'm so focused on winning this game. They just keep getting opportunities now. Like, the later in the game we go, the better our opponents get every single game. It's so crazy. Just go away and let us win one, please. All right, another corner for Knotts. This one's going to go in the middle. Rafferty probably could have caught that. Instead, no, he punches it. That's actually a great play because there goes Jake Jervis. He has no stamina, but he's got a good head start. Keep going, Jervis. Keep going. Put it in. Okay, it was a slow roller, but we'll take it. Jake Jervis puts this thing away. And it's 2-0. Oh, my God. I, I'm, like, exhausted from trying to win this game. I'm not even out there. This is ridiculous. But at least we are going to finally come away with three points. I, it's not as deserved as the last game where we act absolutely dominated. This was more even, but we did what we had to do, man. We got the result we are looking for, and we're going to win this one. Wow. And that is the final whistle bringing this one to an end. I, I seriously can't remember the last time we won a game with this team. It's been quite a while. We finally get a three points here. And what a massive three points that is. With three games left to play now, that actually could end this thing. Actually, three games left to play, we're at least still going to be ten points clear. That is it. We just secured ourselves a spot in League One next year. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so here is the situation now in League 2. We have pretty much locked ourselves into second place. Mathematically, Accrington and Knotts County cannot catch us. They're 12 back with 3 to play. And realistically, we're not catching Portsmouth either. I mean, we're 6 back with 3 to play, but they have 3 more wins than us. So we would have to win all 3 of our last games, and they would have to lose all 3 of their last games for us to even have a chance. And given that they've only lost 6 all year, 
very, very unlikely that they're going to lose three in, a three in a row to end the season. So I'm just going to go ahead and simulate the last three games of the season as they don't really matter. Then we're going to do a full squad report and talk about next year. All right, so we are very near the end of the season now. I think just a couple of days left before we hit July 1st and roll over to season number two. And I want to say a couple of things before we get into this squad report. First of all, I simmed forward a little bit just to test out to make sure we were still going to have a job. We are going to be okay. Uh, we hit every other objective this season except for the money, the, the money objective, which was a low priority objective. So I wasn't too worried about it, but I wanted to make sure... Turns out we're going to be fine there. So we're not going to get fired. We are still going to be with Plymouth and we're going to take them into League One next season. Also, as you'll see in this squad report, I signed a couple of more uh, Youth Academy players. They, they asked to be called up, so I signed them. I haven't shown you them yet because I figured we'd just get to them in the squad report itself. So I'll talk about those two guys once we get to them. So without further ado, let's get into this thing. So first off, we do have Rafferty, our goalkeeper out of the Youth Academy. He went up plus seven this season. Need to work on the handling, though. He does spill a lot of shots in front of goal. Need to clean that up. We'll train him up in that next year. Darrell's still in the team. He went up plus two. McCallum is out of contract at the end of the season, so he'll be leaving us. Declan Lewis went up plus two. He's going to continue to get time at right back. Giannis Excella went up plus two. Gary Miller did not grow. We'll probably look to move him this offseason. Bolvides, the Latvian legend, did not grow, but he's still going to be in the team. Carly Osborne is out of contract, so he'll be leaving us, as well as Jan Sonogo. And this is the one, out of the three that are leaving via end of the contract, this is the one I'm most upset about. He was so good in the midfield. He is my number one choice at CDM, and unfortunately, we're not going to have him anymore. Borhidar Chorbadziski, one of the coolest names in the team. He is up plus two, but he is unhappy. He wants a, a little bit of time away from the team, but with Carly Osborne leaving, I might try to keep him here. Uh, Jordan Bentley went up plus one. I don't even remember where we got him from, but I'll probably look to sell him or something this offseason because he never plays anyway. Sonny Bradley went up plus two. He's going to stay in the team. Casey Gallagher went up plus two. He'll continue to start. He's my number one choice at left back at this point. Nilsson Loyola went up plus two. Ben Purrington went up plus five. I think I gave him a little bit of training at the very beginning of this thing. Nicholas Watson, this is a player that I just signed out of the Youth Academy. He went up plus two. He's six foot one. I want to try to use him at center back, but if you look at his marking, only 41. And as you can see, I've been training, and that's why he's up plus two already. I literally signed him like three weeks ago. So he's up plus two already. I'm working on his marking. If I can get him around 60 or 55 or something like that, we'll test him out at center back next season. Oscar Threlkel went up plus three. David Fox did not go up, but he's a good veteran presence to have on the team. We'll continue to let him stay in the club. Taylor Cooper went up plus one. He would be my only other choice at center back. Uh, he's literally the only other one out of the Youth Academy that can play center back, and he's not very good at it. So we're kind of struggling at the center back spot. Still, despite looking for defensive-minded players, still haven't found a single center back. David Iyaha went up plus one. Uh, Ewan Baker went up plus one as well. Jake Jervis went up plus one. Love Jake Jervis. Liam Green went up plus 14. I probably trained him more than anybody else this season. And he actually has grown into quite a solid wide midfielder for us. So I'm happy to say he's going to have that starting spot when we go into League One next season. Ollie Brown went up plus four. He's coming along slowly, but he's getting there. Oscar Martin went up plus 13. A decent midfielder for us. Not sure center attacking mid is really his best position, but he's the best we got in that spot right now. Elliot, Day or Elliot Evans went up plus two. He probably will be the second choice center attacking mid next year. Connor Smith went up plus two. Niall Ennis went up plus one. Hervé Pillard, Hervé P went up plus four. A very, very good midfielder. Really, really liking him. Despite not having any skill moves, he has one star skill. He's still a fantastic wide midfielder. Uh, Ollie Green went up plus two. Brendan Gallagher, the striker Gallagher, went up plus ten. Gave him a lot of training towards the end of the season. And he's actually growing quite nicely. Still a long ways to go to be a decent striker. But he's still, he, he's growing. He has a lot of potential. He'll get there eventually. Charlie Watson is the other guy I just called up from the Youth Academy. I was hoping he could play striker. Unfortunately, 
He cannot. He can play right wing and center attack. He mid. does have a five-star weak foot, three-star skill, so I do like that. I'm looking forward to giving him some playing time this season. As you can see, I've already start his, started his training as well. I actually started training him before I called him up. That's why he's already at plus three. And then we have Jimmy Spencer. What can I say about Jimmy? I mean, he's a, he's a legend in this series already. And if there's one player that I make an exception for that we keep throughout the entirety of this series, it's going to be Jimmy Spencer. He's, he's got a spot in my heart now. I might keep Jimmy the entirety of this series, even though it's kind of against the rules. And the last player on the list is Jordan Slew. And as soon as I get some strikers into this team, this dude is gone. The other thing we need to do is have a look at the Youth Academy. So I'm just going to scroll through here and you can have a look at what we've got. Ewan Davis is actually, that, I didn't know we had another goalkeeper in here. That's actually pretty big because we only have Rafferty right now as a Youth Academy player in the first team. We need another one. So I'll call him up as soon as he is ready to come up as well. He's got good potential, but I think so does Rafferty. So we'll see which one becomes the better goalkeeper. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to continue to scroll through. You can see what we've got here. A lot of players that I think are going to be good role players. They'll be solid players for us while we're in the lower leagues in English football. But I, we're eventually, we're going to get to the Premier League. And then these players, not going to be as good as what we need them to be. We'll see how much they grow. But right now... We have a lot of decent looking squad players, no real superstars, only a few real superstars maybe in the making. We'll see if we can find some more this upcoming season. All right, so here are the final standings for League Two. We had a very good first season with Plymouth, finished in second place. I knew there was no way we were going to catch Portsmouth. They ended up winning two of their last three. They lost one. Even if we had won our last three, we never would have been close to them, so... Yeah, we always kind of knew Portsmouth was the best team in the league, and they showed it this year. So I'm happy with our finish. I'm happy with the performance of these young players and the growth that we're seeing out of them. Now we have to find out if they can do it in League One. And as we make this jump to League One now, we are going to go ahead and make some changes to the rules. And every time we jump up a league, there will always be a couple of rule changes because there are different types of players you see in each league. In League Two... Most of the players are from, you know, England, Ireland, Wales, places very, very close to England. As we jump to League One, there are a couple of more European players or players from around Europe other than just those ones that are in this immediate area. So the first order of business is I'm going to take one of my scouts and I'm going to put them somewhere else in Europe, most likely France. That seems to be the most uh, popular place other than, you know, the immediate surrounding area around England. So I'm probably going to put him in France to start out with. Maybe eventually in this season I might get our third youth scout, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. The other rule change we're going to go ahead and make is we are now going to be allowed to buy players from other teams. Again, as long as they are computer generated. And honestly, that rule was really forced upon us because, like I said during that scout or the, the squad report, we still haven't found a single center back. The entire season we went with Plymouth, with our youth scout, two of them almost the entire season, didn't find a single center back. Not from England or Ireland or Scotland at the end of the season. None. Not one center back the entire year. So our first order of business next year is going to go out and try to find a center back from somebody that is computer generated and bring him to Plymouth. So that is it. That's a wrap on season one here in the Young Gun series with Plymouth Argyle. With those rule changes in place, I'm really looking forward to getting into next season and start to try to bring some other players from different places to Plymouth Argyle. I mean, we're not just limited to buying players in England either. We can buy them from other places. Mostly it's going to be around Europe though. I really don't want to venture out to like South America or anything yet. There's just, there aren't really any South American players in the lower divisions of English football. Most of them are European some of them are from Africa. There's some African players as well. A couple of Americans I might venture to the United States. You know I love myself a good American. But yeah, mostly we're going to be sticking to Europe still while we're in League One. Maybe once we get to the championship, we'll venture a little bit further out. But for now, we're sticking to Europe for the most part. But that is going to be it for this one. If you did enjoy it, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you when we come back for season number two of Young Guns with Plymouth Argyle. See ya.